Hello, in this video, I'm going to explain the terms hypertonic and hypotonic. So to understand hypertonicity and hypotonicity, you first need to understand what muscle tone is. So in our common language where we talk about like you work out to get more muscle tone, that's not at all what it means in physiology. So what muscle tone actually is, physiologically speaking, is a small amount of um, motor activation. So when we have a small number of muscle uh, motor units that are involuntarily activated while we are at rest, that's muscle tone. I like to think of it as like the car is idling. Like the car is running, but it's just kind of stationary and it's ready to go at a moment's notice. And that's kind of what your muscles are doing. So there's always a low level activity. There's always a low level activation in every muscle in your body. Um, and it's not enough to cause any real force or to create any movement, but it's just like the muscle is idling. And then when it receives a command that it does need to activate to a greater extent for movement or force production, um, then it's ready to go. And that's really what muscle tone is. Um, so it's a sustained contraction that is not causing any movement. Uh, this is normal and healthy and necessary, and it's what keeps our skeletal muscles firm even when we're at rest. So even when you go to sleep, you don't just turn to a pile of mush. Your muscles are still activating at a very low level even while you're asleep and every minute of the day, and that's what your muscle tone is. If there was no muscle tone, that's referred to as flaccidity, which I'll talk about more on the next slide. Um, let's see. All right. So then we get to hypertonic and hypotonic. Hyper meaning too much, hypo meaning not enough. Um, so hypertonic means that there's too much resting muscle activation and hypotonic means there's not enough resting muscle activation. Um, so hypertonic muscles are what we commonly describe as just being tight muscles. So meaning muscles that are contracting to too great of an extent, even when we're at rest and they shouldn't really be activating like that. Um, so there should always be resting muscle tone. So there should always be some amount of contraction, but not so much that it's causing tension or pain. In that case, those muscles are hypertonic. Um, when you palpate those muscles, when you touch those muscles, they will feel hard to the touch because of the muscle activation. Uh, so related terms to hypertonic, you'll also hear hypertonia and hypertonicity, and all three terms are referring to the same thing. Hypotonic is the exact opposite. Uh, that's where we don't have enough resting muscle activation. Uh, so in that case, our muscles are too loose and underactivating at rest. Now, interestingly, when you palpate, when you touch these muscles, they still might feel somewhat hard to the touch, which can be confusing if you're assessing someone. Um, so they still might feel hard to the touch. But in this case, it's not because of muscle activation. It's because hypotonic muscles tend to be in a stretched, lengthened position because if they're not generating enough muscle tension at rest, then they're losing the tug of war with the other muscles that are crossing that same joint. So if you think about the activations of muscles at each joint in the body, the opposing muscles are always generating a certain amount of tension, you know, our resting muscle tone at a minimum. And so if one side is hypotonic and the other side is hypertonic, then that's going to create an imbalance where the hypertonic muscles are winning our tug of war and the hypotonic muscles are losing. So when you palpate the hypotonic muscles, even though they're underactivating, they'll still feel kind of tough and hard to the touch. And that's because they tend to be in a stretched, lengthened position because they're losing the, the tug of war against the muscles on the other side that are activating to the correct extent or maybe even are hypertonic. Um, so if you are assessing muscles and you're assessing posture and trying to correct imbalances, you need to assess whether the, you need to assess essentially the state of that tug of war that's happening at the joint. It can't be merely based on palpation because both muscles on both sides are probably going to feel pretty hard and to the touch when you touch them. Uh, now, related terms there are hypotonia and hypotonicity. Again, all three terms really referring to the same thing. 
Uh, now, as I mentioned, if a muscle has no muscle tone, so it has no resting muscle activation, then we would say that that muscle is flaccid or that they're experiencing flaccidity. Uh, so it's a state of limpness and inability to activate. So this is something that can occur if there is damage to the motor neurons that uh, supply that muscle or if there is damage or interruption anywhere along the motor pathway um, where we're sending those motor commands to that muscle. Uh, so there are all sorts of, of injuries and viruses and things like that that can cause that problem. Um, and in any case, it's always bad. We want to have muscle tone in every muscle in the body at all times because that means the muscle is sort of idling and ready to receive a command for activation and respond to it. Um, if there's no motor tone, if there's no resting muscle tone, um, then it's not idling. It's like the car won't start. And so then when there is a signal to activate to cause movement, it's not going to respond because the car's not even started. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.